What's up, everybody? Couch Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Halo Infinite video. And in this video, we have a lot to talk about. Specifically, while I was out of town, 343 dropped a huge article talking about a lot of the community things that they want and the changes that they are going to be implementing. And there's one I want to focus on in particular, the change or the huge nerf to not only melee, but the mangler. So we need to break it all down and talk about it. But the Game Leap website is the best place to become absolutely cracked. Tips, tricks, and so much more. If you want to dominate at a high level, do yourself a favor and go check it out right now down below. Now, while this is a lot of information to talk about in this article, it's really, really huge. I do want to focus in on what's going to change ranked the most and the most interesting change from a high level perspective and how it's going to affect pro play as well. And this is the nerf to the melee damage. Basically, this was the feedback quote. Mangler is prominent in high level gameplay, especially with its one shot plus melee combo. Remember, this is a really, really powerful combo because the melee does more damage with the mangler. It allows for these insane just shoot melee one taps basically on someone that is full HP. Now they said this about it quote we have made some adjustments to melee overall as well as curbing the mangler one shot beatdown. For Season 2, we've reduced global melee damage by 10% across all weapons, which will lower the Mangler melee proportionally to be a two-shot beatdown. The BR and Ranked will maintain its melee damage to ensure it stays a two-shot beatdown as well. So basically, every single weapon is getting a reduction in melee, but not the BR, because they don't want to change the amount of bullets that you need, which is six bullets or two bursts in the body and a melee in order to kill. I hope I got that right, because if they actually change that, that's going to be a little bit frustrating to have to deal with getting used to a completely different amount of shots you need to hit into someone before the melee kills. But that's going to kind of be a problem on any weapon. It's going to be a little bit weird where you think, hey, I could barely get this melee off and kill and the enemy ends up living like at one HP, very, very low. That could be really frustrating. And I'm not entirely sure why you would actually balance the mangler by just nerfing melee across the board. If you wanted to balance the mangler in this way, why not just nerf only the melee damage on the mangler? I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe I, I have no fucking idea. That doesn't make that much sense to me. But whatever. Going back to the change, this is a controversial one. And we talked about this a while back where pros heavily demanded nerfs to the mangler. And for the most part, our community said that they shouldn't get nerfed. Our community said that they liked the mangler. And for the most part, people were on team mangler. But here's what the argument from the pro side was. They said that it made you get punished for aggression. And in my viewing of pro matches, this seemed to be true. And what I mean by that is you could actually shoot someone twice and have a damage advantage on them, right? They were out of position, you shot them twice, and they turned the corner, and as a player, you wanna chase that, you wanna kill that, you want to secure the damage that you did and finish off the target, either force them to be very crafty with their runaway or their grenade use, or you actually win the matchup because you were the one that got first damage on them and you're punishing them for that. But you don't know if they're just waiting around the corner with a goddamn mangler or they just swap with a buddy with a goddamn mangler and the mangler can insta kill. And even the shotgun feels weaker than that. And the energy sword's a power weapon. So if you look at all of that, the mangler was very, very strong and it created situations where teams didn't really want to push. There was a lot of fear around the Mangler. The Mangler almost felt like a power weapon and it slowed down gameplay. And I think that while that is cool in some ways, it's very frustrating in others. And from the pro perspective, I could definitely see how it would be very frustrating to always second guess every single area you're pushing, every single engagement you're pushing, because you never know when the enemy has a mangler and when they are waiting to try to punish any sort of aggressive pushing at all. And uh, yeah, it also could just feel unrewarding to be winning a matchup for 90% of the engagement and then just lose it out of nowhere. I could see how that could be frustrating. And so for pro play, for the pro play perspective, I think that it's probably fine they nerfed the mangler. I don't necessarily think they absolutely needed to, and a lot of people, like I said, liked it, and I like the gun a lot. And while I do think that the gun is actually still pretty effective from that mid-range, you can get several shots into the enemy and then finish them off with a BR very easily, it actually makes it so a lot of secondaries are much more competitive, right? If we look at the secondaries that you could buy outside of the mangler, none of them were even close to the power of the mangler. Like, 
It was obvious that the Mangler was in the same weapon tier as the goddamn battle rifle. That's how powerful it was. And things like the pistol and the plasma pistol and the assault rifle. I mean, you would never grab these compared to a Mangler. And now, some of them become a lot more appealing. And things become a lot more balanced now, in my opinion, across the sidearm rolls. Like, I like the plasma pistol because you can kind of fish... For the shield break you could punish over shields because it blows off all shields and i think that the plasma pistol now is actually a worthwhile side to grab i actually think that in a lot of ways it's going to be better than the new mangler and it was never that case before it was almost like if the mangler was there you just pick that and even against a lot of power weapons like we talked about the shotgun and things like that many people would just choose the mangler and i honestly think that this is a weird way to go about nerfing the Mangler by nerfing melee damage across the board by 10%. I think that's a really strange way to do it. I'm sure they have a reason. I hope they have a specific reason for that. But I uh, I don't mind the change. I know that some people are going to be kind of pissed and some people would have preferred it the other way. But honestly, if you want Halo Infinite to eventually succeed as an eSport, and I think that that is incredibly important for the Halo franchise to be an eSport, I think that... Halo has all of the things it needs to be a great esport, and we have a lot of things in place to potentially promote the esport. You have to balance quite a bit from the top down. Some people are not going to like top down balance, but with esport centric games, top down balance is all there is. When you look at a game like CSGO or Valorant or any game that is very esports oriented, you have to balance for the highest end of players, and the reason that you do that is if you try to balance for the middle 50th percentile, then something's going to be absolutely broken when people get better at it, especially if it's skill-centric. Like, let's say there's something really hard to do skill-wise, and if you're in the middle 50th percentile, it's like strong, but it's not too strong, but if as skill increases, the thing gets better and better and better, which in some cases is the mangler where it not only is just good in the basic way, which is just shooting and meleeing and just killing someone, but it's also very, very strong in those mid-range engagements where if you hit your mid-range shots, you are actually killing an enemy faster, shooting two mid-range shots and swapping to the BR and shooting them in the head. That's faster than just fighting someone with the regular BR. So it's better in the mid-range engagements, stronger as it scales with skill, and also just gives you the extra utility of just insta-killing anyone who's close by. So you kind of have to do something about a weapon like that if it's kind of making pro play something that is boring to watch or it doesn't look balanced. And you can do that in several ways. You could make it so a weapon is really, really easy to use and decently strong. But then other things, once you learn the skill to them, they become stronger than that. Or you can nerf said thing and make it so it's just weaker across the board and doesn't affect pro play as much. There's a lot of different strategies involved in balancing like that. But regardless, from an esports perspective, I think this was a good change. But I'm still a little bit conflicted about just the Mangler being just a fundamentally different gun now. I really want to hear your opinion down below. How do you feel about the changes? And what's your other favorite secondary weapon i really want to hear about all that down below make sure you stay tuned to the next video because we're going to talk about mouse and keyboard versus controller there's some interesting things in this article we have to break down thank you so much for coming by hope you enjoyed the video go to the game leap website to become absolutely cracked level onyx player and i'll see you next time